Hello, welcome everybody. Gather round. It's Wolf Den Podcast. Today is a very special Wolf Den Podcast. Here, it's so special, we have Will. Hey. <laughs> Thought you could kill me, but here I am. Here he is. Uh, today we're talking about, talking emulation. about emulation. Yay, everyone's favorite yes. topic. Uh, we're talking about that. We're talking about the Mario Brothers movie, because it is currently the hotness going around Tinseltown. Yes. Uh, we're talking about Sony maybe getting back in the handheld game. Maybe. Because handhelds are also the new hotness. <laughs> and a lot of other crap. A lot <laughs> of, hey, a lot of other crap. Yeah. Uh, anyway, thanks for being here, guys. Hello, <laughs> Sky Rule. Thank you for the 11 months. MG Showtime. Thanks for the prime. Uh, we're. I never like to s- admit when we're late because we make the time. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we you guys say, are on our time. We say eight right? o'clock, but that's just like um, if if we're lucky. That that's yeah. more of a. It's a roundabout get here at eight because we'll be here soon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a very good way yeah. to put it. Uh, I was resetting up all the cameras. I I <laughs> I, I did a. I did a thing. I fixed everything. It's it's almost a permanent setup. Uh, so things are gonna. I mean, it's another test stream. Basically, things are yeah. gonna get wonky. You know, we never know what's gonna happen. Uh, working on having the little auto switch camera thing. Uh, anyway, Beats Forte. Thanks for the twelve months. It's been around a while. Yeah, good, good more buddy. than twelve months. That doesn't sound right. You were the one who sent me the Halloween box set, weren't you? Or am I oh, making God. that up? Oh, geez. I hope I have that right. No echo this time. Nice work. Thanks, dude. Uh, Wolf Den Dad says, never say late to an old person. That's a good point. Yeah. It's a very good they point. Could be dead. Because they could be Speaking dead. Speaking of which, I just saw Speaking an article. Speaking of dead people. <laughs> I just saw an article about, uh, what was the headline? Uh, Konami employee arrested for trying to murder his boss. All right. Now, I didn't want to My kind that, of Konami employee. Because <laughs> I didn't want to put that in the keep because- <laughs> Trying to murder a human being is never funny. However, however, I don't think we would have been able to go through that article without laughing and cracking jokes about it. So in the interest of taste, we will leave that out. It's a little, it's a little little funny. It's a little bit funny. It's a little bit funny because it's a Konami employee. (laughs) Anyway, make great games. Make great games. Love them. Um, uh, Metal Gear. Yes, great game. Yeah, Bomberman. Yes, sometimes great game. <laughs> Castlevania. Also Castlevania. Great, great game. It was Beats who sent me the Halloween box set. Thank you for that. It was very helpful when the reboot came out. Thank you. Uh, all right. Let's just let's just jump right into our conversation about uh Xbox cracking down on yes. emulation. This was a thing that came up. Was it over the weekend? It was it was recently. I think it was over the weekend. I saw, I saw a response to MVG's tweet about mm-hmm. it that was insane, <laughs> and I I want to I want to bring that up. It'll probably be relevant. Okay. I, I don't know this article that you're gonna read. Uh, Microsoft is barring users from running game emulators on Xbox Series X and S. On Thursday, Twitter user Gamer12, who's involved with distribution of the RetroArch emulation software on Xbox, posted the error message they received when attempting to launch emulated content. Unable to launch this game or app, the message reads, the game or app you're trying to launch violates Microsoft Store policy and is not supported. Other users with emulation software on the Xbox Series X and S report running into the same issue. When Microsoft first launched the Series X and S back, back in 2000, in 2022, in 2000 and 2020 a lot of twos and a lot of zeros in 2020 when microsoft first launched the series x and s in 2020 users found that they w- could install and run emulation software this made it possible to play a whole range of classic titles on the xbox series x and s including games from the ps2 gamecube and wii and others but now it seems this nearly three year run has come to an end as gamer 12 pointed out you could still emulate games on the series x and s but only if you put the device in developer mode, which you have to pay for. Microsoft seems to have only gotten rid of the option when run it when the console is put in retail mode, something all users can switch on for free with a little technical know-how. While it's still not clear what prompted the change, Aliana, the, an active emulator fan who says she is 
uh, Microsoft Azure developer, uh, claims she contacted an unnamed friend at the Xbox QA team about the issue weeks ago, uh, who said the reason for the ban is Nintendo. Because, of course. Uh, while the source and... Well, I want that's the tweet that I wanted to talk okay. about. Uh, so, Aliana... Suppose so. Supposedly, developer at Azure, which is owned by Microsoft. Yeah, it? Microsoft Azure. Yeah, it's their cloud gaming. Uh, it's their cloud so, technology. Period. Yes. Um. So she was resp- MVG tweeted first and said, "Hearing reports that Microsoft has blocked emulation in retail mode, can't say I'm surprised. Stick to dev mode where it's wall a walled off sandbox." Mm-hmm. Now you might be familiar with emulation on Xbox. Because I made a video. Uh, this, how this is a while ago. Yeah, this, this is like video. when it first happened. Twenty twenty one. Oh, yeah. okay. I guess not that long ago. Okay, shut up. <laughs> oh, this is the. I like this video because it has <laughs> the. It, it, this is the video where I did the uh, anime. Uh, uh, Boxu. Oh, and, right. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a video about uh how to get emulators on your xbox uh, series s or x um it is in dev mode when this happened you could only do it in dev mode so this will still work dev mode i think only costs 25 bucks one time that's it okay you there was a little bit of a scare uh last year where they revoked dev access to people who weren't uploading games okay uh but that was an error and they've since rescinded that so okay. everybody still has dev mode access i haven't checked this thing in a, in yeah. a dog's year but uh I, I guess i'll have to uh so anyway again if you're gonna do emulators just do it just use uh right use 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 the dev mode i guess retail mode is is like you can download retroarch straight from the xbox storefront which is interesting well, retail mode sounds like what what the xbox is in by default when you get yes. out of the box i just think that you can straight up download retroarch from the storefront on the xbox well i don't know because i know at least on the xbox one you know yeah you can download some microsoft apps on there but there was very it was restricted like some apps you can download some you can't even access well one some of the ones were emulated right and that's where the problem is now is yeah. that microsoft took away the access to some of these emulators so if you want these emulators you need to do it in dev mode you can't do it in retail mode anymore so uh aliana responded to mvg and said i'll copy and paste my email from a friend at xbox qa team this email is insane right (laughs) but but i'm now questioning the validity of it okay because there's some crazy claims in here Uh, well i mean they're seemingly innocuous, but when you think about it in the context of Microsoft making a public a, a, a public statement, mm-hmm. it it's it's insane. So this is an internal a supposed internal email from the Xbox QA team or to the Xbox QA team. Thanks for getting in touch with us about the recent ban on emulators on Xbox storefront. We appreciate your interest and concerns. To answer your questions, the primary reason for the ban is related to legal issues with Nintendo. That's crazy to just come out and say yeah. that. While emulating well, it's keep in mind, this person probably thinks that this is just an internal exchange between two Microsoft employees. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not knowing that this was going to be made public. Right. Because uh, this is incriminating. Yeah. Um, well, I think Nintendo, sorry to keep interrupting, but I think Nintendo is like, they're pretty open about the fact that they hate emulators with yeah. a fiery passion. Yeah, but... Microsoft probably works with Nintendo in some very small regards, like with, yeah. with uh, Minecraft and stuff. Yeah. So straight up saying they're, uh, you know, taking them off the storefront because of legal issues with Nintendo is is admitting uh, 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 wrongdoing, right. basically. So anyway, it goes on to say, while emulating itself is not illegal, it can be used to play games from consoles that are still under copyright protection without permission which can create issues with Nintendo and its affiliates. That's also insane to hear from one of the big three. That emulation is not illegal. Yeah. But it can be used to play games from consoles that are still under copyright protection. So that's, I think, a pretty adult way to put it. Yeah. But also kind of insane for (laughs) a a current console manufacturer to admit that emulation is not illegal. Yeah. 
additionally, we take security seriously, and some emulators require permissions beyond what is typical for an app. This could create a potential security risk as these permissions can be exploited by bad actors to gain access to sensitive information. For these reasons, we have made the decision to ban emulators on the Xbox storefront. That makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. That, that I completely understand yeah. that. However, we understand that many users have dev mode enabled to run legal emulation. We don't seek to remove this ability as it doesn't grant access to the retail components of the system and it's considered safe. Unlike retail emulators, dev mode is limited to certain functionalities and doesn't have system read-write functionality. So they're saying, you're totally cool to emulate in dev mode. They're totally cool with that, which is, again, also insane. (laughs) That said, we are still exploiting ways, we're still exploring ways to Follow safe and legal emulation on Xbox. We are in talks with legitimate emulator developers to bring their software onto our platform while ensuring that all copyright laws and security protocols are followed. That is probably the most insane part of the whole email. And what makes me the most skeptical of this email. We are exploring ways to allow safe and legal emulation. We are in talks with legitimate emulator developers. I guess legitimate emulator developers just means like RetroArch. <laughs> yeah, people who develop on Retro Dolphin, yeah. you know, those guys. Um Dolphin is now on Steam or, or coming yeah. to Steam. Uh so they're trying to legitimize themselves. Well, I it's so weird to say like legitimate emulation d- developers. Yeah. Because that, for yeah. the most part, like in, in all mm-hmm. senses of the word, they're not legitimate no they're it, the, the ba- listen, I'm a big fan of emulation. Yeah, the like, basis th- of emulation is Nothing we're saying ripping is against off other emulation. copyrighted material. It's just that, you know, through necessity, emulation is kind of an underground thing. It's a, you know, it's a, it's an edgy thing. It's a punk rock thing. It's not exactly like legitimate in the way you think of like, oh, it's something you can go out and buy in a, in a Target yeah. and take home to mom and dad. Yeah. You know? Uh, and then it, it finishes up by saying, we appreciate your understanding and patience as we work through this issue. Our goal is to provide a safe and enjoyable a gaming experience for everyone, and we are committed to finding a solution that makes those goals. If you have any further questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to us. Mm-hmm. This was very obviously an email that wasn't, it either is not real or was never intended to the public. Right. One of those is is for sure true. Yeah. Uh, I don't think any Microsoft employee would have ta- would have spoken this candidly about the issue if they knew that it was going to be public. They definitely wouldn't have named names like Nintendo and stuff. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, keep reading the article because uh, uh, there's probably some updates. Because Microsoft uh, did respond officially about this. Microsoft's rules technically don't allow for emulation, but the company typically looked the other way in the past, according to Kotaku. We continually evolve our mechanisms for reviewing and taking enforcement actions. Oh, yeah. No, this is what what Microsoft says. Uh, We continually evolve our mechanisms for reviewing and taking enforcement actions on content distributed to the store to ensure alignment with our Microsoft Store policies. This is Microsoft's statement to Kotaku. Uh, Per 10.13.10, Products that emulate a game system or game platform are not allowed on any device family, Microsoft says. The company did not immediately respond to the Verge's request for comment. If Nintendo is indeed the catalyst from behind Microsoft's decision, it wouldn't be surprising. Nintendo has been a long stickler for emulating, has long been a stickler for emulated games, unless, of course, the company itself can create and profit off of them. See the NES Mini, the SNES Mini, the Switch Online game packages, etc. Nintendo notably sued the ROM Universe website for $1.2 million uh, in 2019. Nintendo also went after Gary Bowser, Canadian hacker selling Switch hacks, who has agreed to pay $10 million in fines and is currently serving a 40-month prison sentence. Okay, this completely contradicts what was in that statement, uh, saying that there is a policy that they do not allow emulators. It's it's a it's a slippery slope because when like I guess they don't allow emulators in the way we think of emulators like things to play retro video games like mm-hmm. something for you to play Sonic the Hedgehog on instead of paying for it. But emulators are also used in the homebrew community to make games in a similar style to 
eight bit and sixteen bit games. Yeah. So those might be fine. It just so happens you can play dot SMS ROMs and dot SNES ROMs on there as well. Yeah. It's it is legal. It has been proven legal yes. to emulate a game console to, yes. to completely rip off its architecture and emulate it digitally. Mm-hmm. Um, somehow that's legal. Um, so you are allowed to develop a game yeah. using a console's architecture and emulator. I'm trying to find... So you can develop an NES game and just run this it in an NES emulator. Video. What was the name of the lawsuit? Um, it was like Sony versus... It was a wacky corporation. It was Bleem. It was, Bleem was one, and there was another there was one. There was another one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I forgot the name of it. Somebody in the chat will remind us. Yeah. Uh, and those are the lawsuits that made that literally made it legal yeah. to emulate. Because what they're arguing is, if you own the game, you should have access to play the game that you bought. And if that means play, like saving the data from the game to play it on a different device in your home for personal use, that's okay. So that is the argument that makes sense to us yes but the reason why emulators specifically are legal is because of the bios thing yes that one of the company i think i mean bleem also did it but it was the other one that completely ripped off playstation's bios yeah and they were like look this is our bios we have a copyright you can't you can't do that and then the courts were like no, nah, you can. You yeah. can totally rip off the BIOS. It's totally fine. But yeah. I think their reasoning was the BIOS isn't a real thing. It's a digital thing, which does it, which is fucking absurd yeah, by today's standards. But in the 90s, or uh, this was the year 2000, yeah. they had no idea. They had no idea that digital stuff needed copyright protection. Yeah. So uh, they were just like, fuck it. Let, it's, it's not a real thing. It's a digital thing. Do whatever you want. It's just code. The code doesn't mean anything. <laughs> so uh, because of that, now we're allowed to 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 emulate systems and BIOS yeah. files. The games themselves are still under copyright protection. Uh, Connecticut, yeah, Connecticut, yeah. Connecticut, yeah. yeah. That's the one. So Bleem, and then that one. I think yeah. the Connecticut one might have been first. I yeah, I think it was. But did that turn into Bleem? I think it did. No, Bleem was a separate thing. But they're both PlayStation. Yes, they're both PlayStation One emulators. Sony Computer Entertainment Inc. versus Connecticut Corp. That's yes. what it was. Yeah. So that's what we think Microsoft was talking about when they talk about legal emulation. But again, uh, we're, it's not confirmed if that was actually them. It seems like yeah. Microsoft's official stance is uh, we have a policy that you can't emulate other systems. I think they have to have that official stance yes. on there to cover so that. Yeah. yeah. So that when Nintendo, the ninjas come, yeah. they could say, oh, we didn't know. Sorry. Yeah. And shut it down. But Microsoft's been very good with uh, leaving their stuff open, and and yeah. there it is. It's still yeah. available in dev mode. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I, again, I'm not sure who to believe, but uh, regardless, Microsoft had to come out and make a statement about emulators. Yeah. Uh, the uh, first post I saw about this was it looked like it was about Xbox emulation. Like X, like emulating Xbox 360 right. on a on a console, because yeah. I think in retail mode you could emulate like Xbox 360 games. Yeah. On. In, well, yeah. Well, Xbox that's how you, that's how you play. That's how the backwards compatibility works. On right. Xbox. But it's but an but Xbox no. 360 emulator. I mean, illegally. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, people were doing it illegally. Well, I mean, because like less than half of the Xbox 360 games are backwards compatible. So, yeah. you know, there's, I'm sure there's, the, like, a few people who want to play some random-ass game. That's the one not... I saw was Call of Duty Ghosts. Why would you play the Xbox 360 version when there's an Xbox One version? I'm lying. It's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Ghost is on the cover. <laughs> but that's already backwards compatible. I just saw I just saw the guy that was playing that, and it yeah. said unable to connect or All something. Right. So I, I, I don't know. Uh, I also think it is possible that this all got brought up because uh, there is a small sliver of a possibility yeah. that Microsoft is working with Nintendo in some very small capacity. Do you think this means we're getting virtual, not virtual console, Nintendo Switch Online games on <laughs> Xbox now? That would be wild and that wacky. That would be wild. But that would never happen. I I think it's something stupid and small, like whether it be Minecraft or... or uh, 
some some something something dumb. So it's not nothing like Possibly that. We need to get too excited about to switch. That is potential. Yeah, that is potential. I didn't want to go that crazy, but it is I've, a game possibility. pass on Switch is more possible than Switch Online. Games oh yes, on. absolutely. Um, yeah. So I have said before in an episode that I wish Microsoft would just make a handheld. Yeah. It's more possible that Microsoft just allows other manufacturers to play their games on their right. handhelds, you know, because you just pay for the subscription yeah. and then get Game Pass on as many different platforms as you can. Um, Sony, on the other hand, Sony might be making a handheld. Sony might be making a handheld <laughs> because Sony, whenever they do something good once, they'll keep trying to catch that lightning in the bottle over <laughs> and over again. Um, following a days of speculation, Insider Gaming can report that there's a new PlayStation handheld in development. Codenamed the Q Lite, the next PlayStation handheld is the next piece of Sony hardware that aims to be yet another piece of hardware that requires the PlayStation 5. Insider Gaming understands that the Q Lite is not a cloud streaming device, but instead uses remote play with the PlayStation 5, a feature the console giant has been pushing these past couple of weeks. Uh, sporting adaptive streaming up to 1080p and 60 frames per second, the new device will require constant connectivity to the internet. As for the console's physical features, early prototypes show the console will look a lot like a PS5 controller, but with a massive 8-inch LCD touchscreen in the center. The device sports adaptive triggers for haptic feedback and will include what you come to expect from a handheld, volume buttons, a speaker, audio jack, etc. Insider Gaming understands that the Q Lite is in a, a QA phase and is scheduled to release before the PlayStation 5 Pro oh, and after the detachable disk drive PlayStation 5. Whoa. What? Whoa. We're, we're just getting scoops left no, and right from this article. No, this, this is bullshit. <laughs> I don't believe that this is too much detail. As previously mentioned, insider uh, industry insider Jeff Grubb uh, said that Sony is planning to announce a second phase of the PlayStation 5, which was in reference to its future game slate. Ironically, though, this second phase is very much true for Sony's hardware offerings with, a new, with the new detachable disk drive PlayStation 5 Project Nomad. Uh, which is wireless headphones, uh, Project Voyager, which is a wireless headset, and the Q Light handheld, all scheduled to be released within a very short period. It's understood that the PlayStation 5 Pro is aiming for a holiday 2024 release. That that that's that's a lot of stuff. That's all. That is a lot of stuff. What did it say? 2025. 2020 2024 release for uh, the PlayStation 5 Pro. The okay. alleged PlayStation 5 Pro. I would bet that they are making a, uh, a a more streamlined version of the PlayStation 5 because the PlayStation 5 is gigantic. It's gigantic, it's ugly, and it's got a lot of problems. Yeah. There's a lot of weird technical problems mm-hmm. with the with the PlayStation 5. Uh, nothing that's like game breaking, but just a lot of little annoyances. Yeah. Um like like heat and 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 power regulation and all this like weird shit that mm-hmm. that they could easily streamline if they just you know designed it right the first time right um but this happens you know every console generation especially from Microsoft and Sony they have a mid cycle refresh yeah and that's something i would definitely guess from from PlayStation having a pro version doesn't make any sense because the PlayStation 5 is already beefy as hell it's already beefy and like i don't know necessarily if the playstation 4 pro or the xbox one x for that matter if those were really like needle movers like did people really like go out and upgrade their system or buy those over you know the more affordable base models that basically just do the same (sighs) thing like i'm surprised that they would try that route again they really only did that because the consoles were getting long in the tooth and they needed like something to keep the needle moving they i think playstation considered the pro a success okay. i remember them talking about that but we don't know what successful means i yeah. mean steam consider the steam deck a success they sold one million units which right. doesn't sound like a lot but yeah. i mean they weren't expecting to sell that much so maybe they were expecting to sell a little bit of pros and right. they ended up doing fine it, it just also they have playstation's biggest issue is manufacturing uh 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 they, they they can't make enough PlayStation. Yeah. They're finally able to stock shelves of PlayStation mm-hmm. 5s. 
So why would they now all of a sudden make a better, more, more capable, ver- like why would they make a more powerful version? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. They would probably make it the same thing, more streamlined that is easier to produce. That makes more sense to me. Uh, I just, I think this is another case of somebody hearing that PlayStation is working on another version of the PlayStation 5 and they're just putting pro in it because they, they're just guessing. I've heard, I have heard that rumor that Sony at least patented or prototyped a PS5 with a detachable disk drive. Like they would sell it without the disk drive, but you can buy the disk drive add-on like l- separately. I believe that. Yeah. I'm down with that because that's how it, should have been in the first place right like like the 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 disc list version should just you know like there's have an upgradable there's version. yeah because i i think yeah yes more people are buying games digitally than they are physically you know that that's tied to starting to turn but i don't think it's turning as fast as people think it is mm-hmm. because you still have people in like in the middle of the country with bad internet connections who can't really download 100 gigabyte games really quickly you know, you have people who like, you know, especially gamers, they like having physical collections of their games to, like, show off and stuff. But but it would be cool to have, uh, if you do have a great internet connection and you do like having a digital library, it would be cool to be able to save some money yeah, on the console. Like a hundred bucks, especially the, P- the PS5 disc list version mm-hmm. is a hundred dollars cheaper. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. I love the Xbox Series S, but I understand that it's a problem for people because they want to play physical games. Yeah. Like I have a library of physical Xbox yeah. games that I can't play on this thing. It is much smaller than I ever. I don't it think I've ever so seen small. this IRL. It is tiny. It is so small. Jesus Christ. It's awesome. Yeah, I know. It's just, it you would be nice to be I've able to plug something bought in. almost one? Yeah. Because they're so cheap. Yeah. <laughs> it's really awesome. I know. It's unfortunate that people blame the Series S for holding back development yeah. because people got to develop for the sl- slowest system and it mm-hmm. happens to be the xbox series s but it's such an awesome system yeah it's really cool um all that being said the whole big deal about this article is that they're making a handheld <laughs> and we're completely ignoring that <laughs> yes for the pro and the detachable disc right to, to, to wrap it up i don't think they're making a pro i think it's a slim and i do think they're probably doing some sort of detachable disk drive thing. Yeah. Anywho. What about the f- fucking handheld? I think that's an insane thing for, for, for them to want to do all of a sudden. Because they've been kind of out of the handheld game for a while. I think it's... I think... I don't... It's good because it's a streaming only handheld. It's only designed for yeah. remote play. And I I don't think remote play is like capable of doing exactly what sony wants it to do or like how sony is going to pitch it to you because they're going to pitch it to you as like you can go on vacation to europe leave your playstation 5 at home in america and just boot this thing up and you can play you can play your games yeah that's how they're going to pitch it to you and i don't think remote play is as strong as sony thinks it is in order to do that consistently with no lag and no interference and no like static and stuff so i do think that remote play is kind of amazing when it works right and i mean xbox game pass yeah streaming is incredible right uh xbox remote play is incredible playstation remote play is incredible when it works right unfortunately a lot of the reason it doesn't work is sony's fault you got to use a dual sense controller. Yeah. Or a PlayStation 4 controller or else it just doesn't work. That's so fucking stupid because there's all of these great devices that allow you to play games handheld that have their own proprietary controllers on them. Why would you ruin the experience on those? Microsoft has a whole list of ways to get Game Pass on a Steam Deck. Mm-hmm. You can't do that with PlayStation. Right. You have to use a third party thing that's a whole mess to to to, to yeah. get to work. I have had a great time playing Destiny via remote play on my MacBook. Right. And it runs awesome using the official PlayStation stuff with a dual sense controller. Yeah. The biggest problem is sometimes it just doesn't connect, and the only way to connect it is to go downstairs, go to my PlayStation 5, turn it on, and type in the code that's on there. Right. There's no reason for that. It should just know. 
this is Bob's account. Log into Bob's account. Boom, you're into the PlayStation. Yeah. That's the way it should work. Then you that's have to it. keep your PlayStation 5 on. In yeah, it's in sleep mode. Yeah. yeah, that's the same thing with the PS4. Like it's I the same w- thing with the Xbox. Yeah, but Xbox has a little bit of a better. But I, sleep but mode. the thing is about like with Xbox with Game Pass, you don't need to turn your Xbox on. You just beam the game to your system, and it works. Like on the Logitech thing, if I want to play Halo, I don't have to go make sure my Xbox is on. I can just download Halo to the Logitech. And it'll, it'll well, work. No, well, you're not downloading Halo to you Logitech. Will stream, lo- stream Halo. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're streaming it from Xbox's own clouds. Right. Yeah. I don't have to turn my Xbox on in order to play Halo. Right. Now. But Xbox does have a remote play right. situation for games like Call of Duty, which which you only have on your console right. and it's not on Game Pass. And even that works better than PlayStation's remote play because... You just log in and it goes, which Xbox do you want to play it on? And then you click the one and yeah. then it's just, it just, it, it's your account. It's your account. So it knows you're logged into that account on the Xbox. Yeah. Just turn on the Xbox and let me fiddle around the Xbox. I just, I think a streaming only device specifically for remote play, not even cloud streaming, like yeah. any of the PlayStation three cloud streaming games you can get on PS plus. This is specifically for remote play. Yeah. I think. That has a very limited uh, market. It absolutely does. A hundred percent. Especially because like it's not gonna work the way Sony's gonna advertise it to. It's 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 gonna be severely limited. They'd probably be much better off just making the Vita too. Yeah, I mean maybe they have some plans to get cloud streaming working better with uh, uh PlayStation Plus Premium. Yeah. I mean they're they teamed up with Microsoft Azure to get their yeah. cloud gaming off the round and why not you know they gotta get if they want if they want to compete with the best cloud streaming servers why not just use their cloud streaming yeah. service? <laughs> um but yeah the reason why i thought this might be really cool is because rem- having a re- remote play capability is really cool to have sony in their own stupid little bureaucratic way they want uh, proprietary ownership over their ecosystem yes and the only way to get remote play to work well in a handheld for sony is mm-hmm. going to be for their own proprietary stupid little thing and that'll be fun yeah. for what it is but it could be better if they just give up a little bit of control and just let other people develop stuff like uh having a remote situation that you could just use on other consoles or stream the fucking games straight from a cloud or yeah exactly a much more easier to understand cloud streaming service yeah that isn't like three tiers of playstation plus and only some of the games are cloud streaming and some of them aren't but you have to you have to have the highest tier in order to stream the games otherwise you know you you can't yeah and the only way to play playstation 3 games is to stream them you know it's if they could streamline that i think they could have something here now this is something that they could say if it's only streaming it or remote play it's something they could sell for like 200 bucks and that would be i think that if it's only remote play i think that's way too high 200 bucks i think that's the minimum i think 150 maximum i don't don't think so if it's just remote because remote play is so limited because you have to have a playstation 4 or 5 you have to have it on you know you have but to, it does it, it works a lot better than i think you realize it works really good okay when it works but <laughs> when it works <laughs> it is it is really handy two hundred dollars is a lot it, it is a lot to ask for something like that yeah. you need to really want rem, rem, remote play mm-hmm. It should, I've said this with Microsoft too, if they're going to get into handhelds, it needs to have at least enough power to play like the indie stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, and why not? Like it's got, it's got to have power in it. Like the G Cloud has a little bit of power in it and it can play like Dead Cell. Yeah. Like just give us that. Just give yeah. us a little bit of that capability. But they might not. They might limit it purposely uh, for uh, for ux reasons they might yeah. be like it's easier if we just tell everybody they can't play anything that way they're not disappointed when it yeah. doesn't run on it which would be stupid mm-hmm. but uh i hey i'll I'll take whatever handheld i could get from mm-hmm. from sony uh 
it's just I have a I have a lot of I have a lot of criticisms with handhelds. Yeah. Believe it or not, Will. <laughs> oh, I believe it. <sighs> anyway, what are you people saying? Uh, Big Daddy Mayhem, thank you for the six months. Wicked Spooky, thanks for the twelve months. Yo, guys, I hey. hope you're both doing amaze balls. Love Z's. Hi. Hey. A <laughs> Rod Dragon. Thanks for the 19 months. Uh, Caleb Fox, thanks for the 10 months. Happy 10 months, Wolf Rose. Happy 10 months. Happy 10 months. Eric Henley, thanks for the 60 months. And Jell Clude, thanks for the five. Uh, we have tissues here. You want tissues? A roll of toilet paper. Because yes. we both have very bad allergies. Yes. <laughs> it's freaking, they got, it's been hot. All of a sudden, hot. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's going to make us yeah. leak. I was just looking up like what the time frame was between PS4 revisions. Okay. So the PS4 came out in 2013. Then the Slim and the Pro both came out in 2016, a few months apart. So three years. Three years. And we're about... We're about due for we're about PS5 due. Pro if the timeline is that makes sense. Be the same. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But like, what, what much more can you add? Because like the PS4 and the Xbox One came out... Like right when 4K was taking off, and they were still 1080p systems. That's yeah. kind of the reason why there needed to be a a mid system refresh so they can hit 4K or at least pretend to hit 4K. Well, that's why they needed a pro version. Yeah, the mid system refresh was for other things like like the well, you just have yeah, um, energy efficiency things like that. Yeah, and the, like the Xbox is the perfect example. The yeah. Xbox One original is dog shit. Yeah. And then uh they slimmed it down, uh made it so the brick wasn't yeah, massive and a problem, you know, that they, they Yeah. they really fixed no, it. No, yeah, no, I Yeah. I understand and that. And the original like... PlayStation 4 had disk drive issues and mm-hmm. it had fan issues for certain people and and stuff and they fixed all that with the with the yeah. slim. And that's what we need with PlayStation 5. Right. We need uh just a cleaner looking one we needed uh us uh, we need their power to be fixed so yeah. it doesn't freaking think it's off uh, thinks i'm uh, unplugging I'm, it all i'm the time. talking more about like the pro model because like what tv technology is there that the yeah current systems aren't that aren't meeting right now that's why i don't agree that there's gonna yeah. be a pro model i think that it'll be something completely yeah. i think it will be a slim for sure uh yeah we don't hdmi 2.1 we still don't have a lot of I don't have an HDMI 2.1 TV. No, do I have I. monitors, yeah. but not TV. We don't have a. Well, I just got a switcher, but I don't. We still don't have 2.1 capture card. Like yeah. I can't plug my PS5 into my setup because I run it through a capture card. Yeah, I think at this, I think to a certain extent, the consoles have outpaced the rest of technology on yeah. the market. Yeah. So. so there's really no yeah. point in going more pro. Mm-hmm. Oh God. Oh, Jesus. All right, let's talk about Mario. Woo! Yahoo. Yahoo. All do, right. are, do we need to read an article? Uh, Well, yeah, this, this is about how this great is, it's doing. Yeah, this, Why you do this? I'm going to try to fix my camera. My camera's not working. Okay. It's a blockbuster. The Super Mario Brothers movie, an animated adventure based on the classic video game, crushed the competition with its jaw-dropping $204.6 million domestic and $377 million global. Uh, global debut over the long Easter weekend. Those results are far exceeded expectations and even surpassed the starts of recent uh, installments in Universal's biggest franchises like Jurassic World Dominion, which was $145 million domestically, and The Fast and the Furious 9, $70 million. So expect the sequel to be announced faster than you can say, let's go! I hope this writer got fired. Uh, the box office just keeps growing and growing. Marvel's Jim Orr, Universal's president of domestic distribution. It's a tremendous worldwide debut, and the movie has clear has a clear runway. The PG film, which cost Universal, Illumination, and Nintendo roughly $100 million to bring to the big screen, thrived as the de facto choice among family crowds who have been starved for a compelling theatrical offering since last December's release, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, which I've heard is actually very good. I actually, I, I actually want to see that. It's on Peacock, so maybe I'll do that this weekend. Um, but the kid-friendly film also manages to expand its reach beyond parents with young ones, thanks to a heaping dose of nostalgia and positive word of mouth reviews. Not so much. 
Mario turned in a, into a four quadrant blockbuster resonating with males and females, young and old, who grew up with Mario, Luigi, and the other inhabitants of the Fantastical Mushroom Kingdom. The film is based on an incredible IP, which is beloved by people of different generations, says Veronica Kwan Vandenberg, uh, president of Distribution Universal Pictures International. Just because Mario is adapted for one of the most popular video games doesn't mean that the film was preordained for blockbuster status. In fact, the 1993 disastrous live-action Super Mario Brothers starring Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo, who was a friend of mine, I took a picture with him once, uh, yes. has become... And he a- posted it on his Instagram. Yes, and he talked to Bob <laughs> about his camera. So, yes, we are friends with John Leguizamo. Yes, yes. Uh, has become a legendary example of Hollywood's failure to properly translate video game stories uh, from consoles to cinema. Uh, let's just get to the... It broke records, It broke records, yeah. It is the highest grossing debut of this year, surpassing Ant-Man and the Wasp. It is the biggest five-day opening of all time, overtaking Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, It is the highest grossing debut for Illumination, beating out 2015's Minions. Okay. Uh, The second biggest debut ever for an animated movie, outpacing Finding Dory. Um it is the highest grossing debut for a video game adaptation, beating last year's Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Ooh. <laughs> it is the second biggest animated opening of all time internationally behind Frozen 2. Uh, it is the biggest video game movie opening of all time. Uh, yeah, it is. It is a big, big hit. Second biggest animated opening behind Frozen. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, okay. Highest grossing debut for Illumination. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Second biggest debut ever for Anna. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, domestic. Okay, I understand. Oh, global. There's more. Yeah. Uh, Wait, what's the difference between international and global? Yeah, there shouldn't be. Uh, are they discluding China? Because they're saying mm. biggest video game opening of all time eclipsing 2016's Warcraft. Warcraft did a horrible... Except for China. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so I, th- I literally think global just means China. China, okay. Highest anime opening weekend ever for IMAX. Okay. Uh, yeah. the movie did amazing. Yeah, the movie is a massive hit. It's I think massive AJ massive. on Twitter said, uh, who's surprised everyone knows Mario is a huge IP? Yeah. And he's right. Yeah. He's right. It's just we haven't seen him outside of video games in this capacity i think it's there's always that fear in the back of your mind that like they're gonna like they're gonna screw it up you know because yeah. like you know yeah everyone knows who mario is but the problem with hollywood is hollywood gets their hands on things and they think they know better than everybody else which is how you get something like your 93 mario brothers movie right so uh squid vorb says international excludes north america global is north america and international Oh, there you go. That makes sense. Yes. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, when adapting video games to movies, people think, or or, or these these the people in power mm-hmm. think that they gotta do all this weird shit to adapt it. Yeah. Meanwhile, Mario's been around forever. Everyone just understands that he's just it, things aren't gonna make sense. Uh-huh. Like that was my biggest uh uh. The biggest thing I was surprised about with the Mario movie was, and 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 my what I liked the most is that they didn't explain every little tiny thing. There's floating blocks; they're just there. They're just there, yeah. But we don't need they. I did read an article where they were going to explain it as the 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 Toad's uh, mind uh, floatanium, like yeah. a, like a mineral that made things float. And they're like, forget it. People will just yeah. It's kind of like how the way they get to the Mushroom King. Oh, full spoiler alert for the Mario Brothers movie, by the way. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> might as well. We both saw it. Um, the way they get to the Mushroom Kingdom from Brooklyn is just that they're in the sewers and they see a pipe that's green. As opposed yeah. to all the other ones like, what's in there? And then they just get sucked in. Yeah, they don't explain that at all. They don't explain it there. They don't explain why somebody would build a pipe to the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah. Uh, one thing uh, Wood was confused by was uh they there was a a flood in brooklyn and they're like we're gonna go save brooklyn and that's why they go under underground yeah. to save brooklyn and wood was like they never explained what the flood was and me and jackson both went 
Yeah, there's just floods in New York, yeah. and shit just happens. You're just yeah. walking down the street, and a, f- a fire hydrant's overflowing. Yeah. Nobody gives I a mean, shit. Like, it, you don't need an explanation for that. You it don't just need happens. that for most places. Flood. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it was totally understandable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was surprised that they didn't need to explain every little thing. Fire flowers. How do they work? I don't know. You just uh, touch them; it just works. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Like. All those little I, things I, I could, appreciate. I can definitely see like some other movie would try to like make a big deal about how because Mario's not from around yeah. these parts, and so be like the Superman thing because he's now on Earth, he gets powers. Whereas was on Krypton, he wouldn't. Right now that he's in the Mushroom Kingdom, his biology is different, so like it touches everything and it gets powers. From Why him. is Peach the only human in in the Toad world? She's like, I don't know. I just was. I, don't know, I, just, I just born here. here. I showed up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like okay, that's yeah, fine. Fine with me. We're not gonna ask questions. We yeah. made it this long, loving Mario. We don't need to ask how. And, and I think what's most interesting about the Mario franchise and what Miyamoto created is that. It shouldn't make sense at all. Yeah. But everybody just understands. Right. The Goombas are bad. You stomp on their heads. Yeah. The toads are good for some reason. Fire flowers are good. That star thing, that's good you want. Yeah. It makes you powerful for whatever reason. Yeah, because the stories in the in the games like were always secondary to like what you were doing in the moment. The yeah. new creative ways you were trying to solve problems and get from point A to point b and like how each level changes over time all the new things you can do to get through the levels mm-hmm. but yeah. you just kind of understand like these are the bad guys these are the yeah. good guys and here's what you do you, yeah. you 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 go from point a to point b you jump on people's heads and and he's a plumber for some reason yeah and you just kind of it's just a general consensus and so we both saw it yes uh not a lot of story at all. Not, it's it's yeah, literally it's, like I loved the first couple minutes when they were in Brooklyn and then when they made it to the Mushroom Kingdom, it was just nonstop action. And it about 30 minutes into it, I was like, uh, it's a kid's movie. I'm, I'm not going to oh, get I, any I exposition. From, I knew that from like minute one that yeah. this was going to be. A I was like, movie. slow down a little bit. And, I, and I, I need a breather. It's going to be like not the good kind of kids movie. We're yeah. like. You know, it, well, it's, you were saying last week, I think, that it's Illumination. It's not going to be the good kind of animation. Yeah. And, like, look, to their credit, it was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. It wasn't as egregious. But the the whole scene where, like, they're trying to fix the woman's sink and they get into a fight with their dog. Yeah, it was a like, little. That, that's, like, one of those, like, oh, we have to add, like, the big wacky segments, like, make sure the kids aren't bored and stuff. Yeah. And, like, you didn't need that. It didn't really add anything to it. You already, like, I guess if it's trying to show you that the Mario Brothers are failures, like, we already kind of got that from, yeah. like, Spike, you know, saying that they suck and, like, the family saying, like, hey, what are you doing this for? Yeah. Like, if, is... if, you're, if your dad, you know, yeah. basically says, like, your dad, the one with the accent, saying you're mimicking his accent, like, yeah. he doesn't like it, like, you're we get the yeah. point that that you're a also failure. very accurate representation of Italian American families. Yes. yes, that was th- the best part of the whole movie. <laughs> so I, I was so happy they brought it back. You yeah, know, at, at the end. So um, there was that. Uh, I really hated the needle drops in this movie. I'm just gonna say that right out. I thought every single one of them was stupid and two arms and the popular songs they played. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's been a lot of criticism. Of yeah, because the, the all... biggest one was the DK song getting snubbed for the uh uh take on me yeah 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 that that sh- that should have been like the thousands of songs for, from these games that they could have used and like about the wonderful songs in the donkey kong games they use take on me you know the the training montage oh this is when mario becomes a hero i need a hero yeah it's a oh, little too on we're about to do we're about to do uh crazy you know high octane racing Thunderstruck by ACDC. Oh, we're in Brooklyn. No sleep till Brooklyn. Oh, it's going to be a blue sky day. Mr. Blue Sky. So I didn't mind half of them. I kind of, uh, the biggest criticism is is the take on me one. When you first enter the DK world, they play take on me for some reason. Um, I heard the song that was originally going to play the, 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 uh, just a scored version of the Donkey Kong theme i don't know i heard it and i was like okay. i've never heard this song before i don't know what the hell they're talking about right. this is a donkey kong song i wouldn't have thought i wouldn't have heard this and been like oh yay the donkey kong theme but then 
somebody uh put it over the part in the movie mm-hmm. and it, it scored perfectly to that part of right. the movie and, and it was kind of it yeah. kind of it fit really well and what, it sucks even more because when they do inter interlope the mario score into the movie it's awesome yeah like they did a really good job of translating those songs into yeah the movie at specific points in time and like making sure it fit within what's got to be a do. mix no there doesn't have to be any <laughs> The no, re- there needs to be popular songs because there's going to be parents that are being dragged no, by the kids. No, no, there doesn't. Yes, no, there, there does. does. No, because it uh, parents don't need ever. No, like I can name one Disney movie that has popular songs in it, and they do it twice. You know, everyone else like doesn't have any. Even like the non musicals don't have any like popular music in them because that does. That's a you know that's a cheap and lazy way to convey what you want the audience to convey. A good filmmaker who knows how to use popular music a won't pick obvious ones and b will make sure it fits the tone and the narrative without being obvious about it you know people like martin scorsese and james gunn like they know how to do it this film picked the most obvious ones i i I was saying that when i heard the dk song I didn't feel anything. I was like, this doesn't sound like Donkey Kong. It's vaguely like jungle themed. Okay. And then I, I was like, take on me. When I heard that, I was like, oh, I like this song. <laughs> so I felt something. I felt more than I did when I when I heard the Donkey Kong song. I like the songs that they adapted. Yeah. They, they did a they great job just adapting done that it. For all I of liked them. Jack Black's Peaches. It was great. See, I don't, I don't know how I feel about that because part of me is like, he asked to sing this song. Like he, he like I, I want to do a song because I'm Jack Black. But then the other part of me is like, they wrote this for him, and tried to like, it sound it seemed like they tried to do a Tenacious D song for Jack Black, and that doesn't really work because Jack Black makes the Tenacious D songs as he is Tenacious D. It sounded to me like he was just in the booth and did that, and they were like, okay, <laughs> we gotta we gotta put that in, yeah. <laughs> We all knew when Jack Black was going to be Bowser, there was going to be a musical Bowser thing. Yeah. We all knew that was yeah. going to happen. And I thought that was fine. It was very short in the movie. It was like a minute long. Yeah. But I thought it was great. Yeah, no, it worked. It it worked for what it was. Yeah. I I liked the movie. I, you know, I, 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 I would have liked a little more exposition with like... Uh, I, I found it to be just okay. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I wouldn't... Like kids are gonna love it. Like I think that's the big thing. Like kids are obviously gonna love it. And they're gonna want to see it again. I feel like though, if you are forced to watch this movie because you have a child who wants to watch this over and over again, you're not gonna want to slit your wrist during okay. the making of it. You know, because some kids' movies are unbearable. Like our mother, for some reason, decided to let my kid watch the live action Beauty and the Beast. That movie is trash. I hate that movie. <laughs> I don't want my child exposed to that nonsense. Yeah, that movie was bad. That and also, movie... it makes me realize that Beauty and the Beast just doesn't make any fucking sense at all. The no, whole Beauty premise the... of the movie no. doesn't make any sense. Beauty and the Beast works because Beauty and the Beast is only 90 minutes. And it, okay. like, it breezes through and you're distracted by the, the gorgeous character animation, the character design. But she gets song. captured by the Beast and then she falls in love with the Beast. It's Stockholm Syndrome. It shouldn't be a movie. Well, you'd be surprised. How a many... kid's movie. You'd be surprised how many Disney movies are problematic in yeah. that sense <laughs> but like the original works because like it ha- it was like ha- designed around like what it was an animated musical this live action one just i don't know what the fuck they were trying all the disney live action movies yeah and the next one's peter pan and that was personal so like well your daughter was like we watched like an hour of it and then she was like just go to the transformation yeah her favorite <laughs> part of the beauty beast is the transformation. and then we literally skipped to the end and we were like yeah, yeah. that's the whole but movie. like they they also try to do things to like fix the original and like try to make it you know more modern like bell's the inventor now she's not her dad because girl boss and whatnot and like yeah uh, they i don't know was it they, they tried to like expand her backstory by explaining what happened to her mother nobody gives a shit about her mother <laughs> We didn't need that. You don't need to explain every little thing. Exactly. We just just deal with it. Uh, It's it's, anyway. Disney live action movies are bad. Um, And we're getting Moana. Yeah. (laughs) We need that in our life. Um, What was I saying? Well, yeah. So some kids movies are unbearable to watch, but like some aren't. And I feel like 
because especially because Mario is short, it's only ninety minutes. Like it'll go by, and like you won't feel like you like you might feel like you wasted your time, but you won't. Uh, you know, you won't be angry the entire yeah. time. You know, I was engaged the whole time, but I think mostly because I loved all of the references. Yeah, I, I was, I was, I was getting bored by all of the action, but I was sitting there trying to. I was I was happy to see Mario on the screen and I was looking for things the whole time. So I, I was engaged. I felt like there's there's two types of reference movies you can make. Because like all movies are references now. There's two types of reference movies you can make. You, there's movies like The Force Awakens and Creed where it uses their references in service of telling a specific story. <laughs> then there are the bad kind of reference movies like The Rise of Skywalker a lot of later Marvel films, some of the DC films for that matter, where like they use their references as a crutch because they don't really have a story to tell or it doesn't really have a point to it. They're using their references as a way to mask the fact they have nothing. And this movie teeters back and forth between two. Okay. You know, like, okay, yes, you have to prove that, you know, if you want the Kong army to join you you have to beat donkey kong in combat okay it makes sense to do a super smash brothers uh thing there makes a little less sense for them to travel to have carts and travel on rainbow road to go to the dark yeah. place or whatever i was a little frustrated that uh they did a lot of mario kart stuff but to be honest unfortunately that's why a lot of people know mario is through mario yeah like kart. i'm not saying like don't do mario kart stuff i'm saying be better at doing mario kart stuff like don't have the one turtle with the blue shell stop in the middle in the d dead center of the frame and scream blue shell yeah that and was then, really stupid uh, like, he's j we can tell he's the blue like shell that. like that sucks yeah. that's bad referencing yeah yeah that was bad but you know when like the phone rings and it's the gamecube theme yeah that's, that's kind of cool, cool. That's like fun. i'm cool with yeah. all that stuff yeah, there there are parts where they get it right, and then there are parts where they get it wrong, and that's you know, blow shell was very wrong. Yeah, that was that was dumb. Yeah, but I will say there were not that many dumb references like that. There was a lot of things that I just appreciated. I don't know. I feel I, f I feel like if I, if I were to like, cause that's another problem too. Because like I, you know, I saw the movie, I remember the movie, but like, it's kind of just like gone now. Yeah. It's not yeah. It's not really memorable. Like I can't think of like aside from Luma, I can't think of a single funny thing <laughs> from that movie. Like nothing really made the, me laugh. Luma was the funniest. Yeah. And the the dinner scene with the family. The dinner scene with the family. But that's, that's just relatable. I, I lived that. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, otherwise there's nothing really like laugh out loud. I do appreciate that Mario doesn't like mushrooms. He just hates mushrooms i just i feel i like thought that was a funny little little twist yeah, to an extent yeah i guess yeah i guess that was all right it's like an ironic little thing because like everyone knows he has to like mushrooms yeah. in order for the movie to progress yeah but it's like oh look he's got to force down these mushrooms but it doesn't really like it doesn't really like you know, create any real drama to it it's just like a gag yeah like that could have been something like he really hates mushrooms and like he refuses to eat them because he doesn't, you know, because he doesn't like them that much, but he has to because he's got to, you know, gain their Yeah, power. that's what it is. It's just an aside because they have to get right to the action because if yeah. they spend too long on any one thing, the kids will lose interest. Yeah. And that was the most frustrating part yeah. to me. And I feel, are we trying to dive too much and analyze, like, A, a kid's movie, and B, like, uh, a franchise that's not really known for its deep storytelling? Yeah. Yeah. But... You can do a good movie, a good kids movie with that's like light on story, but like big on everything else. Like, you know, not this is not a kids movie, but, you know, Fury Road famously does not have a deep story, yeah. but like it's enthralling with everything else. Like I feel like with with the Mario Brothers movie, like any real creative spark that they might have had only goes in like certain scenes here and there. It's not throughout the film, and I feel like that's very frustrating if you're trying to watch if you're trying to enjoy what you're seeing you know it just it it 
there's no story. It's just the they don't do the this happens, therefore this happens, therefore this happens. Yeah. They do this happens, and then this happens, and yeah. then this happens. Like you're just following them along. Yeah, it's very linear. They say we're gonna go here, and then it's literally just you following them there, and yeah. there is never a conflict. I mean, there's conflicts, but it's never anything that that. Uh, slows them down. Yeah. It, they always just plow right through it. Coworker of mine, when I told him I saw this. There was he, one twist and it's something we saw in the trailer. So it, it yeah. didn't, it, it wasn't a twist. Uh, coworker of mine, like when I told him I saw it, he asked me like, what was the story? I'm like, you ever play a Mario Brothers game? That. Yeah. It's, it's you know, literally. The, twi- the twist is instead of saving Peach, you save Luigi. Like, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, it was, I liked it. I then, I like, came out of it and I said that was good for what it had to be. <laughs> I would have loved for it to be more catered to me. I want story and shit. Well, but I, I, see, I think the thing is, like, if it had like a story, like an actual story with like real character development, I think people would, you know, like it more. I, obviously, people already like this movie. Like as it is, but I feel like people would have liked it more, and I think it would have stand the test of time more if it like put more effort into telling a more compelling story or just being something more visually interesting than what we see in the games already. I think that if they made this movie for the same demographic that the Sonic movie was for, it would have been better and i would have liked it well they did it's the, the, it's the same demographic. i think the sonic demographic is a little aged up than the mario demographic i think the mario is for even younger kids than the sonic okay yeah. yeah but even it's still like again we haven't seen sonic 2 yet but sonic 1 you know for as much like as far removed from the games as it was at least it like tried to be its own thing yeah like you know by taking place on earth instead of in you know wherever sonic lives by just having Jim Carrey be Dr. Robotnik, like things like that, you know, created its own identity that was separate, but also connected to the game that it came from. The Mario Brothers movie is just basically a cutscene for 90 minutes that you don't play for a lot of it. And like, you know, animation probably is the best way to translate Mario, but it, I don't feel like it went far enough to translate it from game to movie. Yeah. I, I think that to be clear, I think that the Sonic movie and the Mario movie are both good. <laughs> I think that they're both, and they're both very different and fine in their own way. I, f- I feel like this Mario is better than Sonic one because I feel like it, because of its you know, more connection to the games and it's better understanding of why people like the games. Right. But I feel like Sonic is the more interesting film to talk about because of all the different things it tries yeah. to do. Yeah. And to that regard, I feel like the 93 Mario Brothers movie is the more interesting film to talk about because it's so different, because it's so disconnected from everything. Yeah. But it's also, that's been the problem that's with been the video problem. game movies yeah. too. But I feel like in the same regard, like, like I said before, like I feel like, people are going to be talking about the 93 Mario Brothers movie for good or ill for a long time. I feel like, you know, this current Mario Brothers movie after this year, I don't know if anyone's going to, you know, be talking about it in the same regard. I really don't. I don't think there's anything more to it than what was just presented. Yeah. Okay. But who knows? I think people will talk about it because it's just Mario and, people want that in well, yeah. any capacity they can get yeah i don't think it did anything and that's the reason why the audience score was so high yeah because they just people just want mario and the critic score is so low because it's not a good movie it's just <laughs> it's just it's mario yeah and we i enjoyed it because i liked seeing him on the big screen bob trying to save that nintendo bridge what fucking nintendo bridge <laughs> i they don't like me I, you know, part of me while I was watching the movie, like, I thought of, you know, because Nintendo bought a movie studio not too long ago. Yeah. Like a small studio. Yeah. And, like, part of me was like, I wonder how this movie would have been if it was just Nintendo making it. Like, if they didn't have to, if the Illumination wasn't involved, they didn't have to do the Illumination bullshit. Yeah. It's, like, it definitely wouldn't have had modern music. It would have probably been a bit more streamlined. It wouldn't have been as goofy as this movie was. 
that that's an interesting point uh they did buy an animation studio i think the deal is they're gonna continue to make movies along with illumination but nintendo loves being hands-on yeah in this movie the first name you see in the credits is miyamoto yeah he's it's a, created by miyamoto and and then the name of the director i forgot who directed. yeah um so that's i think a testament to how hands-on nintendo is i think they just have a lot of productions in the pipeline with movies and mm-hmm. stuff and maybe they'll make a show and i think that they just need an arm at nintendo to work specifically on the relationship with the animation studios right and that's what nintendo pictures is going to be so they'll do some stuff in-house but i think they're also going to continue to work with universal right also like when they show up in the mushroom kingdom and they're walking through with all the toads and stuff that is just nintendo world yeah and universal studios like so like that was clearly yeah. like you got to do this because we want people to come to nintendo world they're like, yeah. okay yeah that makes sense Anyway, uh, yeah. hey, uh, uh, DK Rap Creator was in... Speaking uh, of credits and not being in the credits, uh, as the Super Mario Brothers movie is starting to release around the world, fans are getting to see all the references and Easter eggs it includes. Unfortunately, it seems one of those special moments in the movie doesn't credit the person behind its creation. Composer Grant Kirkhope has created all sorts of music for Nintendo-related games, and that includes the infamous DK Rap for Donkey Kong 64, while the rap does make an appearance in the film, Kirk Hope's name is nowhere to be found in the credits. The credit takes a more the credit takes a more straightforward approach with the DK rap, simply crediting the song to Donkey Kong 64. Obviously, Kirk Hope was sad to see this, sharing the following sentiment on Twitter. Uh, I was really looking forward to seeing my name in the credits for the DK rap, but alas, as expected, it's not there. FML. Yeah, that was really unfortunate. He was the only that was the only song not credited to a person. Yeah, it was credited to the video game. Which that is, was really bizarre that they yeah. that they didn't just throw him a bone. I guess it I guess the Nintendo feels like they own the song, so they don't really need to like put anything more than that. But at the same time, traditionally you credit the person who wrote the song. <laughs> so that was a uh, european studio that made yeah rare Rare was european right yeah yeah Yeah, i i just think nintendo is a a, it's culturally they don't like the white people working (laughs) on their games i i they no that's not true because like they've had next level games uh what they they did uh no they have a history of i forgot if they did punch out or Luigi's Mansion. They have a history of Westerners working on Nintendo IPs. Yeah. But their, you know, their relationship has never been great. Right. There's always been something weird going on. And I think that's an example of that. Next Level Games did do Punch-Out and Luigi's Mansion. Oh, they did both. Look at that. But them, Retro, some other studios I'm sure I'm forgetting... Yeah, there's been some weird relationships with retro too. Yeah, like like there's there's a lot of it. it there, there's like I don't know, like a weird sort of like a a, a, a disconnect. There's like a weird like barrier right but, but, but between that. Uh, it used to happen with Sega. There was a big rivalry between Sega Japan, Sega America. Yeah, well, I feel like that was more of. a that was more like uh because sega of america and sega of japan were like on equal footing they were basically like the same you know the, the creatively the they were creatively, creatively yeah. yeah nintendo like it's nintendo and then everyone else's subsidiaries mm. like they nintendo doesn't let you forget like whose name is on the building whereas sega of america and sega of japan they were like on equal ground but they were oh they hated at, at odds yeah the whole time oh yeah yeah I think Grant Kirkhope, I'm I'm on his Twitter, and I think he deleted the tweet where he. Uh, I think so too. Where he was yeah. upset about the the credit. He probably got yelled at for something, but I mean he's right. He's right. It's it's the same thing we saw with uh, Bruce Straley not being credited for the Last of Us TV show, even though he co-created the series. Yeah, you know it. it you know people ask like, why do video game publishers and creators want unions? Like this is why. There's the example of Metroid Dread winning an award and uh, Doug Bowser getting yeah. the, the studio won an award and Doug Bowser accepted it yeah. because that was, I think, a Brazilian studio or something or a Mexican yeah. studio uh, that made Metroid Dread. Yeah, uh, they just don't they don't 
they're like they like kind of weirdly distance themselves unless it's a japan it, studio it's it's like what the problem with like when marvel used to be like they don't want well or still now technically with more with the marvel movies individuals don't do don't create these characters yeah marvel creates these characters yeah, yeah. you know and the problem with that sentiment is that led you know six or seven guys to leave and go form image comics and eventually marvel had to declare bankruptcy yeah so, and that's why a lot of nintendo studios are called like nintendo research and development or nintendo yeah, they have one like very clinical names but when zelda breath of the wild won an award Awanuma went up and accepted the award. Yeah. There's no reason they couldn't just let the fucking developer of Metroid yeah. Dread show up to the award show. Yep. Doug Bowser has no business accepting an award for Metroid Dread, a yeah. game he did not work on. Now I don't know who developed Metroid Dread. Mercury's theme. It's not hard to figure out, yeah. is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I shaved my beard. Will, did you shave your beard? I too? did, actually. I think, yeah. I think they're calling out that you shaved your beard. I did. It was getting scruffy. My daughter noticed it. That was very nice. Oh my god, that's so cute. Uh, Danky Kang, thanks for the Prime subscription. Yeah, uh, Mercury Steam is um, based in Spain. Spain. I was just, I was wrong. <laughs> I said Brazil and Mexico. I got. I <laughs> damn it. Uh, all right. When Bob gonna shave? I literally shaved yesterday. Also, shut the fuck up. I took off a lot more than Bob did. Yeah. I will say. I like I, to like get little close i took a mirror outside and shaved outside just let it go everywhere <laughs> see i lay down paper towels on my sink i just like... cleaned the bathroom that's why i didn't want to do that so i okay. just went outside and shaved outside do you have a mirror outside i brought a mirror outside okay yeah all right yeah. there you go thought a thought uh, a little little uh thought for next time <laughs> do it in front of your neighbors too that's yeah the best let them know who's boss anyway uh oh new man k1 thanks for the 10 months hey wolf bros when is will showing back up on the nintendo podcast we need to schedule that we would like to do that yes uh if i let me know i will be there in a heartbeat i gotta start writing more questions i have a theme this time oh yeah. and they're gonna be questions i don't know the answer to <laughs> oh my god okay that's good kind of yeah <laughs> that's good uh, last time we did a game show, uh, there was some animosity because uh, Wood thought that uh, Hannah was playing favorites, <laughs> which is bizarre because uh, why didn't he think you were playing favorites? Yeah, I guess, you know, sibling rivalry. I don't genuinely like you. <laughs> I just I just have to see you like every week. <laughs> I think it's because you were more stern about the rules. Hannah was just trying to make everybody happy. Uh, and like when Wood had a problem with one of the rules, she was like, oh okay i mean we get but you were like no yeah. one point off <laughs> you were like fuck you i i am a student of mark summers in the double dare school so i take game shows very seriously one of the most annoying things is uh the tiktok you're in that blew up where you're talking about the uh you asked this question about the color of nintendo cartridges yeah. and uh you told wood to be more specific because he said turok yeah. you said be more specific and the question was what nintendo cartridges are black yeah. yes name a nintendo cartridge is black and he said turok and you said be more specific he said turok too and then what you was my you said ecw you said something like we owned one yes or something you threw me a bone i did and and i also threw wood a bone by saying be that's more the thing and all the comments are like how come the second guy got thrown a bone literally you threw wood a bone yeah. by saying and, and then, how come the first guy had to be more specific because, because he got the here's, game wrong here's the thing the game turok one is incorrect turok, turok one, two is correct turok one is gray turok three two three and rage wars all black cartridges yeah so he just you had would, he just had to say any turok game other than turok one he had to say anything other he had to say any turok game other than turok yeah so he said turok and you said be more specific you, he literally got the answer wrong. Yeah, <laughs> that that fucking drove me crazy. Oh man, TikTok commenters, arguably worse than YouTube commenters. <laughs> you know why? Because they're all young. Because they stupid. don't they don't think more than a second. They got they got sixty seconds to think, and if well, they think that's harder the, than that's that, the they're problem on to the with next short one. form comment right there. It's not the fact that China's stealing your data. It's the fact that you don't have enough time to write a well thought out comment yes. on. A, also, oh. they have they have I think like. 
80 <laughs> characters to write a comment. It's like insanely short. Wow. Yeah, so. Oh, God. What we're saying is YouTube shorts are the future. <laughs> but potentially. They potentially are yeah. the future. Anyway, hey, let's talk about Nintendo Live. Nintendo is doing a thing that yes. we just learned about today. I don't want to go to this. <laughs> don't make me go to this. Nintendo Live is coming to Seattle, Washington, and North America this September. Following the success of Nintendo Live in Japan last October, oh. the event will be making the jump over the pond and will be bringing fans a way to experience the games and worlds of Nintendo. More details will be revealed closer to the event, but Nintendo has given us a higher level overview of what to expect, us being Nintendo Life, not the Wolf Den podcast. <laughs> uh, games, tournaments, live stage performances, photo opportunities, and more. Nintendo of America CEO Doug Bowser said the following in an announcement. Uh, Fans of all ages can currently experience the unique games, characters, and worlds of Nintendo on Nintendo Switch, but we want to expand that scope with a new experience with Nintendo Live 2023. We're giving attendees a chance to celebrate together with family, friends, and a broader Nintendo community in the spirit of fun and creating long-lasting memories. Last year's event in Japan featured a live concert with DJ KK from Animal Crossing and Deep Cut from Splatoon 3 holding their own concerts. Uh, don't know whether these musical mas uh, maestros will be in attendance in Seattle later this year, but we can hope. Uh, this does not sound like my type of event <laughs> like like this just seems like a fun little kid thing yeah uh so it, uh, the you would expect an event like this to have like an announcement or something yeah. or like games to play uh but I, I it just to me it just seems like a like a get together for kids well it says there's gonna be games to play and there's gonna be a tournament yeah but so. i'm thinking more like a convention like PAX, like right. there are new games that usually aren't released yet. This yeah. year, Nintendo didn't really have anything, but yeah. in previous years, they had new games that weren't released yet. It was kind of a huge deal. Yeah. And they do, Nintendo does do certain things where they will uh, do a tour with, like, I think they did with Splatoon 3. Yeah. They allowed you to play Splatoon 3 a little early. So they're just not that uh, this doesn't seem like that. This doesn't, seem, uh, unless they have something that they haven't announced yet, but. It seems weird to announce this without announcing any of the big deal games that are going to be there. So yeah. I r think this is going to be a nothing. This is going to be nothing interesting. Unless you're in Seattle. If you happen to be in Seattle, why not stop? Yeah. <sighs> anyway. Yeah. I, I mean, it doesn't seem like it's going to be like a big convention, like Nintendo's answer to E3 or anything like that. But it is cool that they are doing like just something. They're getting people out there to like hang out and see Nintendo stuff. Yeah. You know, even if it's only for like a day in nintendo's it, backyard it is in september so yes. i my immediate thought was oh they're doing an e3 thing and uh they're not this is this is not that so mm -hmm. i don't know uh anyway that's just a little something yeah uh jedi survival file size revealed isn't the game out is it not out? uh no the game is out i think next uh the 28th april oh. 28th so it's soon Soon. I'm never going to finish that game. Before yeah, I, I want to. I keep saying I'm going to go back to it, but I never will. <laughs> I started Resident Evil 4 on the Steam Deck. Oh. And it is pretty good. Where did you get up to? Uh, I'm like 45 minutes in. Okay. I, I, I got through the first little village part and a little bit of like the second area. Okay. Uh, that, that's it. Yeah. The, I started it and I was. The, the difficulty levels mm -hmm. are like, uh, this is for people who haven't played. Resident Evil 4 before and the highest difficulty that you can do by default is people who have played the original Resident Evil 4 and I was like yeah. I played the original Resident Evil 4 <laughs> and I hovered over it and then I was like I just want to beat the game yeah. I want to get through I, it. I did the same so thing. I put it back to middle and it's pretty hard yeah it's still pretty hard yeah no it's still, still a good challenge there yeah however with Sonic games they always say like have you know the highest difficulty is for people who played Sonic the Hedgehog games before I'm like yeah fuck right I have <laughs> <laughs> so it was difficult because when I got to the first little village area, mm -hmm. there's a fuck ton of zombies, and I'm trying to do everything perfect. I'm trying to shoot them all in the head. I'm trying to sneak around where I can yeah. and kill as many as I can. And then I, I, I kept restarting because I kept like, oh, shit, I got hit. I ran out yeah. of herbs. I want to keep my herbs, and I was trying to get a perfect run. Yeah. And then I finally got a perfect run, and I realized you just have to wait them out. There's no... Oh, the first, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Don't, you don't have to kill any of them, yeah. actually. You just have to fucking... It's timed. So... That was so annoying. I, I got to the point where you found, you rescue Ashley the first time. Okay, that's pretty far, is it? It's actually not that far. It's only like... I think it's chapter five of like a 16-chapter game. Okay. 
Um, but I, you know, I res- you rescue Ashley in the church, and you have to like make your way through the cemetery with all the Ganados going after you. The first few times, I like I tried to kill them all, but like Ashley kept getting kidnapped, and Ashley's life system works different than it did in the original. Okay, she doesn't have a life system. She just if she takes and if she takes enough damage, she'll fall to the floor, and you have to immediately revive her otherwise one hit she dies okay it's not like in the original resident Evil 4 where she has a life meter that you can give her herbs to that's kind of annoying yeah because then you share health basically because you're giving her herbs in the original one yeah yeah, yeah. um but after like two or three tries of like trying to like make it through finally i'm just like you know what fuck this equip shotgun blast any of them that are in my way and just run just make a beeline for the exit and that that worked so okay at a certain point you're just like maybe i don't have to kill everybody <laughs> yeah uh proven potato says do these guys read chat no uh <laughs> jedi survivor file size revealed oh uh, do you want to just know what it is yeah 155 gigs that's so much on that's specifically on the pc i have the game the first game on steam deck yeah and it's like 60 gigabytes yeah it's uh according to this article it's uh 44 <laughs> That's so. That's a hundred gigs more. That sucks because I do want to play this on Steam Deck. Yeah, and I won't be able to. My Steam yeah. Deck is five, twelve gigabytes, I think, which is more than the default. It's like the middle. Yeah. Um, and oh, wait, is it? Wait, what do I, I have? Five... I have the middle one. What? What's the middle one? Is that two fifty six? something. Yeah, two fifty six. Yeah, that makes more sense. At two fifty six, I'm gonna the, almost all of my Steam Deck is gonna be Jedi Survivor. No yeah. thanks. I just had to delete a bunch of stuff for Resident Evil 4, which yeah. runs good, not great. Okay. It just runs good. I had to lower it to 30 frames. It runs at 60 frames, just really loud. Okay. And it's jittery. So yeah. I uh it could be fine, but I lowered it to 30 because I'm 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 comfortable with it. <sighs> yeah, I don't I don't know. I mean, I obviously this is a next gen game, it's gonna be bigger, it's a, you know, it's gonna be more graphically intense and stuff. They're adding new systems to it. But like a hundred gigs more than the original. Like, come on. There's it's it's a it's a dance. Like, is it because the game is that graphically impressive? Or is it because it's graphically impressive and they are too lazy to compress it yeah. and, and and make it more reasonable, make it a more reasonable fire si- file size. Yeah. Like Call of Duty when when Warzone was dropping 100 gig updates yeah no reason for that yeah that's pure laziness um look at nintendo games they're all they're like well, breath of the wild is only like you know it's 20 gigs not breath of the wild tears of the kingdom is gonna be like 20 gigs and that's the biggest nintendo i game. think i think like 15 gigs yeah, yeah and it's the biggest nintendo yeah. game 15 gigabytes that's crazy but yeah uh i, I don't know i'm definitely not gonna be able to download this on my steam deck yeah uh and I, you know, I don't even know if I'm ever going to beat the first game. I'll, I'll just, I'll just watch I the, do. the all the cutscenes because <laughs> yeah, I'm interested in. in I that mean, stuff. I know, like, I know, like the big surprise boss fight at the end, and I know, like, some of the other twists and turns and stuff. Apparently, did you, just, did you see Kenobi? Yeah. Do you remember when they get when he's in like um, the Citadel and he sees like the grave of all the Jedi floating in like the back of tanks? Yeah, that's from Jedi Fallen Order. The 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 room. The room, yeah. Oh, that's the, cool. Yeah, I I didn't know that because yeah. I didn't get to that part in the game. Isn't the oh the robot is in Mandalorian? The ro- your robot companion? Yeah, it's in the Mandalorian. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Somebody, I must down, what the hell's his name? BD one, BD one Mandalorian. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Book of Boba Fett. He's okay. in the Book of Boba. Oh, Fett. the bad one. Same same thing, but yeah, uh, yeah that that. Okay. Oh yeah 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 yeah. I probably saw that and was like, oh, in the back of my mind, oh, that was from uh, Fallen Order. That's cool. And then immediately went to, like, why the fuck am I watching this show? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't watched the new Mandalorian at all. But it's I... it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I want to see. I haven't finished uh, uh... Andor. I haven't finished that. <laughs> what else haven't I finished? The uh, Last of Us. The Last of Us. Okay. I haven't finished The Last of Us. The Last of Us is just like, I know what happens. Yeah. So, like, I don't, I'm I'm not obligated to watch it. Yeah, like, people are asking me, like, yo, did you see the season finale of The Last of Us? And, like, did Joel wipe out an entire hospital full of people? Like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, we game. know. We know what's going to happen. 10 years ago. Yeah. Welcome to my level. <laughs> anyway, uh, 
okay. Uh, let's plow through the rest of this. Okay. Half-Life Alex, no VR mod. Created. A team of modders has figured out a way to bypass the need for a VR headset to play Half-Life Alex, Valve's PC VR exclusive game. The early access mod created by G GB underscore two development team lets you play through the entirety of the Half-Life 2 prequel with a mouse and keyboard, the input method that many of the franchise's fans prefer. You still need a copy of the game on Steam as well as a relatively powerful gaming desktop or laptop to run it on. But it's great news for anyone who would, who either can't stomach VR, can't play in VR for accessibility reasons, or simply can't justify buying a pricey VR headset to play the game on. I have heard that this works on Steam Deck. This mod? This mod. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. I've heard uh, according to this article, it, apparently it works very well mm -hmm. and it's easy to install. It's just drag and drop. However, Given the games are made for VR controls and, t and its tactile hand-based interactivity, it's not a one-to-one -one translation. Um, uh, that means that the game's famous liquid shaders are mostly are not convincing in 2D. You know, because oh. like the game has this thing where like you pick up bottles uh, and like you can see the liquid moving. Yeah. That only works because it's in VR. Yeah, because your eyes are always in a yeah. certain spot. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, what else? Uh, some core components of the VR game, like using Alex's gravity gloves to pick up or interact with objects with a satisfying flick of the wrist, as well as the game's sense of scale and atmosphere, are lost. In the mod's current state, you are you won't be able to get nine of the game's 42 Steam achievements, which mostly rely on interacting with objects in the world with your hands. So the game, like, yes, they were able to figure out a way to make it work without VR, but because the game was built for VR... There are still things you can't do in this new mod. Yeah, it. I really want to play Half Life Alex. Me too, because I liked Half Life. I yeah, Half Life Life's guy. great. Yeah, uh, and I love the idea of Half Life Alex, but I don't think this mod is going to translate well at all. I don't think it's going to be the way to play the game. Yeah, I. I don't think I would like it. Yeah, I because they they built Half Life Alex specifically for VR. Yeah, and to take that away, like you might as well just watch a Let's Play of it. Yeah, that, honestly, like, they, yeah. that's you're getting the same experience. You're like you're seeing the game, and like in this case, you're slightly interacting with the game, but you're not interacting with it. Pro and yeah. I hate the term like you didn't play the game properly, but in this case, you're not. Yeah, playing no, the literally, game properly. it's not going to be good. Yeah. Um, I was just looking up the how long to beat. It's 14 hours. That's pretty long for a VR game. Uh, if you just plow through it, twelve, uh, mm -hmm. and that's a, that is a long time to be in VR. Yeah. I was expecting it to be a lot shorter yeah. than that. Um, the best part of Half Life Alex is using the markers on the glass window in the beginning. That is true. Yeah, that's Philip, our cousin. Oh, hey, <laughs> hey, Phil. Um, He's the only one who allowed to use Wolf Den like for Twitch reasons, other than us. No one else. Yeah, no his, one else. That's name's not well, him. our dad did. True. So. so our dad and our cousin Phil. Well, our dad's not allowed. He yeah. he will hear from our lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Anyway, uh, I don't know if I'm ever gonna get to play Half Life. Yeah. I know a friend of mine has it, but I would have to go to his house and use his VR rig. So I think one day I'll just break in. Do I have it? I don't know if I ever bought it, but uh, I the the Oculus will plug into the computer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you really want, you could put it on this laptop and take it. True. Um. Anyway, new Xbox design lab colors. Here they are. Wow. Woo. Uh, Microsoft. Where's has, the picture? Microsoft has announced a slew of uh, new Xbox design lab colors for its Elite Series Two controllers, giving players even more options for customizing their game pads. Uh, in total, there are 16 main colors for the controllers' top and back cases, 12 colors for the A B X Y buttons, 17 accent colors for paddles and D pads, and 25 accent colors that cover the rest of the controller. When Design Lab launched uh, for the Elite Series 2 controllers in October last year, they were limited uh, options available, but now there are billions of possibilities for personalization, according to Microsoft. This video is just GameSpot's, I think, old video. Wait, where's the new... Uh, There they are. Okay, yeah. I have to go to Microsoft for it. Okay, so their Elite controllers, uh, the customizations, were cool, but not enough. Not enough stuff. Yeah, there yeah. weren't enough color... Uh, 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 options. I was happy with the one I was able to build for mine. The biggest issue are the grips. I yeah. hate that they have to be black. Yeah, I, I'm surprised like that hasn't been addressed. Yeah, I kind of understand because having white rubberized grips will get dirty really quickly. But and, what if, and that's evident with the PlayStation 5 controller. Okay, but at the same time, like 
you know, there are other colors to make yeah. the grips. Like that's the whole point of the design lab. Unless like that was their way to differentiate a regular controller from a pro controller. But at the same, like have a texture, it's still textured. It'll yeah. always be textured different. Unless it like, it has to be black because of like where they're sourcing this from. I, I think that it's the, the rubberized grip is designed in a certain way where they haven't figured out how to colorize it yet. Yeah. So it has to be black. Um, but anyway, yeah, there were a limited amount of color options too, and now there's just more color options, yeah. which is good. There's also I saw there was a Vampire Survivor collab. They did. Oh. A, they, they made a Vampire Survivor. Uh, it's just a color scheme. Yeah, that I mean they like do that make. with all their. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't like a special edition controller or anything. Yeah. So that's cool. I like the design lab. Uh, I think it's the best way to get a controller. For, yeah, for, absolutely. For, uh, for, yeah. I mean, it works great in every emulator. Yeah, it's, it's an Xbox controller. It's yeah, the most I mean, universal controller. I feel like that's one thing Microsoft did right was like they, especially like for PC, like they made the Xbox controller compatible with PC, and like that that became the default controller for a PC gaming since the 360. Yeah, and because of that, every emulator just has Xbox controls by default. Every emulator and ev- really every video game. Yeah, every video game that's for PC will just work with an Xbox controller. So now you can get the best, most universal Xbox controller in like a customized way. It's yeah. just expensive. Yes. Anyway, Ninja Turtles. The Cowabunga collection has sold over 1 million copies. Uh, an impressive feat in light of being a retro collection comprised of older games from the 8 and 16-bit era uh yeah that's that's really the news like that it sold one million copies but that is impressive because this is just a collection of game of like old ass video games from the 80s and 90s most impressive is that it's konami and they tweeted about it yes (laughs) they're happy with what they've accomplished yes which i mean on the one hand like you don't think a lot of people will be buying this game because like again it's an old ass collection of games from the 80s and 90s there was a new ninja turtles game that's in the same vein as this True. So people probably should have just gotten that because it, you know, it plays a lot better than these games. Yeah, than most yeah. of these games do. But I mean, yeah, people just really want to play Turtles in Time. Good. Like I think you know, especially- it, it's a good thing because it means that uh, uh, now there's more reason for these developers to port their old stuff. It shows that there is like a market for, you know, older games, retro games, licensed games to a certain extent. Yeah. So. You know, hopefully that means Konami. I mean, Konami's already done. They did this. They did Castlevania. They did Contra. You know, maybe they'll do Bomberman next. Maybe we'll finally get that Metal Gear collection back, like on all systems, and like a better version. It's it's also this is like a really robust retro collection. Yes. It has so much like niche stuff. It's got Game Boy games on it. Like yeah. it's got a lot of things. So. Yeah. Hopefully this uh, incentivizes developers to put more stuff like this on other platforms. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Sony Lashes. Oh, no, 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 no. Resident Evil Dead Island. What is this? Death Island. Death this Island. Is, okay. This is uh, the Avengers of Resident Evil movies, Bob. This, they're getting the whole gang here. Is this the whole movie on YouTube? No, no. this is a trailer. Okay. Uh Resident Evil heroes Chris Redfield, Jill Valentine, Rebecca Chambers, Claire Redfield, and Leon S. Kennedy are all here in Resident Evil movies to end all Resident Evil movies. Capcom's next computer animated adventure set in the world of survival horror, Resident Evil Death Island, will see the quintet of zombie slayers heading to Alcatraz to uncover and battle a new threat which may just, which may just be zombie sharks. Oh, God. Help, help us. Uh, I'm not interested at all in Resident Evil movies. Uh, now, th- this is like a CG, like made made for DVD movie. Yeah, th- this is incredible. Like they've they've done a couple of these. I've only seen the first one of them. It's literally just cutscenes from Resident Evil. Like, yeah, that's why form. I'm not. In- I rather. Just I play mean, the, the game. trailer for this is anime as hell. Like it goes hard with like all the action and like all the flips and stuff. Okay, but I it just it just looks silly. It does like Resident Evil even at its silliest is scary. Like this doesn't look scary at all. It just looks dumb. Yeah. I mean, I kind of like the campiness yeah, to an extent. Yeah, but at the same time, no. Uh, Sony lashes out at government for not shutting down Microsoft Activision deal. Uh, oh, poor guys. Let me just go right to the tweet because that's... Oh, my God. That's a lot. Tom yeah. Warren? 
Yeah, Tom, the Tom Warren tweet. Okay. Why? Where is it? Why aren't you showing it to me? Why is everything in my I life fa- bad? Sony is still arguing that Microsoft could sabotage Call of Duty on PlayStation and even points out digital foundry comparisons, forum discussions, and more. Yeah. So basically, they're still fighting. Like they, this is um, in regards to the EU, the EU or UK filing that, like approving the merger or like one step closer to approving the merger. And like Sony's just going all out and be like, they're going to sabotage Call of Duty. Yeah. Uh, in the statement today, Activision goes to great lengths to promote console co- uh, competition by releasing an equally high quality Call of Duty game on PlayStation and Xbox while making sure there's somewhat different technical while making use of their somewhat dif- different technical capabilities. Post transaction, Microsoft would have different incentives because degrading the experience on PlayStation would benefit Xbox, PlayStation's closest rival. Microsoft would have no incentive to make use of the advanced features in PlayStation not found in Xbox, yet the addendum claims that Microsoft would not have the ability to engage in partial foreclosure. It does so despite its recognition that Call of Duty is a critically important for the console competition and that fully withholding Call of Duty would foreclose PlayStation. The addendum's implication is that Microsoft could degrade Call of Duty on PlayStation, including simply by not making it as good as it could be, raise its price, release the game at a later date or make it available only on game pass without harming competition between PlayStation and Xbox. That is insane because of what we talked about last week. Yes. How last of us on PC just don't work. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then in the next slide, it says by way of example, within a week of releasing modern warfare 2, digital foundry, a leaning analyst compared performance on PlayStation five and Xbox series X and S. Another industry specialist, VG Tech, compared the frame rates of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 across PS5 and Xbox Series X. Studies show that these types of comparisons are highly influential, as shown in, fi- in the figure below. The level of social conversation surrounding consoles and games is extremely high. So they're not trying to say that Call of Duty has been nerfed on other platforms before. They're just saying that the conversation around the 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 way it performs on different consoles is important to them. Yes. Uh, well, it's important to them because like if that conversation leans towards, Hey, this game doesn't work on PlayStation, get it on Xbox. That affects them. Right. I understand. Yeah. And they're right. I mean, it, it, it's an important part of the conversation, but in what world would they want to release a version that purposely doesn't work right yeah like it, that doesn't it make doesn't, any sense that's such yeah, a shot in the it, foot it's such a bad business practice to purposely release a bad version of a game on a different yeah. system for no reason at all because like that's gonna look bad on microsoft you know pe- they're gonna lose sales by people not buying it on playstation because more people have playstations than xboxes it's just how it is and yeah <sighs> Like, you know, people are not going to buy the next Call of Duty then because they don't trust Microsoft to handle the series the way it's been in the past. I mean, we just saw it with, uh, we just saw it with, uh, Last of Us running like, running really bad yeah. on, on PC. Yeah. We saw that as an issue with PlayStation. PlayStation yeah. developed the game poorly and it's their fault. Yeah. Although we did meme a little bit about how PC gamers should just get a PlayStation, yeah. which is, uh, you know, the opposite argument. Right. But, uh, it is PlayStation fault. That yeah. game did not work well on PC. They yeah. should have let it cook a little longer. So, I mean, they're trying, they're really trying to like end this deal. It is not looking good in their favor. No. I feel like at this point, if Microsoft, like Microsoft will release call of duty on, playstation 5 and if it doesn't utilize the adaptive triggers in the dual sense then sony's gonna be like see see they're borking it on playstation 5 yeah yeah you know which uh, it, it, it never used adaptive triggers on playstation 5 i don't think it did think it, it did. did um they were terrible like like certain guns had feedback yeah. in different ways but it or or they had you know how you can develop different heights yeah. for, for for the thumbsticks some guns utilize that with uh i forgot which the one that came out with the playstation 5 right. um and it was stupid i i just want hair triggers on everything because yeah. there's no reason for all that travel anyway uh last bit of news halo infinite creative head uh, joseph statton is leaving yeah uh joseph statton one of the creative the creators most closely associated with the halo franchise is leaving microsoft news of his departure 
first reported on Friday by IGN. We're grateful for Joseph's contributions to the Halo franchise and Xbox as a whole. Microsoft told the outlet we wish him all the best in his new adventures. Staten later confirmed the news the same day. Hey, folks, I am indeed leaving Microsoft, he said on Twitter. I'll have more info to share soon, but for now, I'd just like to thank all my Xbox colleagues for their understanding and support as I embark on a new adventure. Staten was the writer and director of cinematics for Bungie's first three Halo games and later served as the co-creative director for Destiny. He left the studio in 2013 Ooh. and joined Microsoft the following year as senior creative director on the Xbox Game Studios team. In 2020, he moved over to 343 Industries to help the studio continue to work on Halo Infinite. Staten's departure from Microsoft comes following months of uncertainty around 343 and the future of Halo. In January, the company uh, reassigned Staten to its Xbox publishing division at the same time that it had cut at least 95 jobs at the studio. Later that same month, Bloomberg reported that the studio was starting from scratch on a new Halo game following the struggling the struggle to maintain interest in Infinite. Yeah, so I feel like one of the guys who was there from the beginning was there at Halo from the beginning and like sort of shepherded the latest release across the finish line. Him leaving, not a good sign. No, <laughs> no, no, that's 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 bad. I mean, I mean, I think that there's potential for all new blood to come in and make a great Halo yeah. game. But uh, there's definitely some issues internally at Halo. Uh, yeah. And that's why I, yeah. all these people are, are feeling like they're not heard and, and they're leaving. Yeah. And, and like, you know, Microsoft will like, they're not going to end Halo. Like it is their, it is their franchise. Mm -hmm. They will throw money at that thing and until it works properly. But sometimes you throw, you know, when you throw money at a problem, all you do is create more problems. Yeah. And, at this point, that's I feel like that's what's happening with Halo. Yeah. Like they don't really know what they're doing with it. I mean, maybe starting from scratch, like the article said, is the best thing to do. Like we've talked about that on the show before. Yeah. But only time will tell. Uh okay. That's it. All right. It's time to go home. Just kidding. This was actually from CTV News, who says, uh, movie reviews. The Super Mario Bros. movie has all the charm of an unplugged Game Boy. All right. Two things. Yep. One, Game Boy runs on batteries. Yep. So. Yep. Second Notoriously thing. kind of hard to find a, a charger. Yes. For, for, yeah. For you a have to Game buy Boy. a proprietary charger for yeah. it. Uh, second thing, your response. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I saved that here. Uh, I said, I'd say there's a lot of charm here and just a picture of all my Game Boys. Yeah. And there you go. What's, what's wrong with the, with the Game Boy? A Game Boy system itself has charm because, like, you know, it's, it's cute, it's small, it's got a nice form factor, and it comes with a wide variety of colors and stuff. I think the what they're trying to say is, you know, you know... It, by not and not being turned on, you can't play the game, so there's nothing to do with it. Yeah. Like there's nothing to do with the move. But the problem is, he picked the Game Boy. Those things are those things. Are yeah, fun. it was dumb. That was a dumb analogy. This yeah. is a perfect example of of critics who don't give a shit about video games, only give a shit about movies. All of the charm was lost on them. I do appreciate like some of the reviews I read from like movie credit, like actual movie critics who like do bring up the fact that they play games. Like the guy who reviewed it for Roger Ebert.com spent the first paragraph explaining his history with Mario franchise and like mm -hmm. playing the most recent game. And then he went into trash the movie. <laughs> so <laughs> this nice. one, this review, the tagline is the super Mario brothers movie, two stars. That's the tagline. Okay. Because two there's, stars a, cause there's a star in the, yeah. in the movie. That was a, that was, okay. a, it was, that a, was a little pun. That was, was a little pun. And I feel like I should clarify, like, I don't think you need familiarity with source material to like a movie based on the source material. I I'm agreeing with the critics that this movie is not a good movie. Right. <laughs> I'm just saying that if you do have familiarity with the source material, you will like it. It helps. It, yeah. It helps. And it, you will enjoy yourself. It's not a cinematic masterpiece see a good headline would be familiarity with the franchise is the cheat code to enjoying this movie Ooh, there you go you should I, you should review i movies. should review movies i am smart you should start a youtube channel where you review movies i already did something today <laughs> 
Uh, anyway, uh, oh yeah, that's the tweet of the week. Yes. Let's, uh, so that means we're going to talk to you people. people yeah. Starting with answering questions I left on last week's Wolfden podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden podcast. Oh, you didn't get audio on the tweet of the week. What the hell? Oh, oh. oh, I know why. I know why. I'm so sorry, guys. Guys, I'm so sorry. Guys, hold on. How about now? Tweet of the week. Tweet hey, of the week. Tweet of the week. So there we go. And that was your tweet of the week. How about that? Oh, no. no. Did you oh. just kill everything? I killed something. Oh, boy. What does that say? You know what? I don't want to read it. <laughs> I don't want to read it. I'm just going to hit no. Okay. Hope for the best. Okay. No, we're going to assume everything worked. Yes. Okay. okay. Right. My ears. <laughs> you know what? You deserve it. Uh, all right. From last week, we got Colin Nolan. It says, it's such a tender moment when you sick toddler. When your sick toddler is laying in your lap and they just look up at you with such love and vulnerability and they say, da da, and then cough their flu germs directly into your mouth and nose. It really is. It really is. I, I, I got that by holding my son. He just looked at me and goes, <coughs> We went to Easter dinner on Sunday. Literally every single person was sneezing and coughing. Yeah. Yeah. Muhammad Hader says, sometimes I forget that I didn't comment and I still get mad at Fred for not including me. <laughs> anyway, Bob, you're wrong about Mario Party dice. You shouldn't be able to time it. Dice are supposed to be random. But it seems like you can. It's a it's a fake out. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, the way it rotates is, is, is false. Yeah. It shouldn't be like that. Yeah. If, if they wanted to do that, it should be you hit the button and then it continues to roll. Right. Or they should animate the dice uh, rolling better by obscuring the numbers. Yeah. So that yes. you don't think there's a chance you could stop it on the number you want. Yeah. It's it's bad design to yeah. have it. You hit it and then it just randomizes it. Mm -hmm. that, that, it, it makes it seem like you can stop it at, at, a, at the right time when you can. Yeah. Brad Linder says it's. Is the chat in this episode even watching the same show? Really random conversations in there. Sometimes people just talk amongst themselves. Yeah, it's the, you know we don't really interact with chat as much as a Twitch stream usually does. So uh, people just talk to themselves. Sometimes. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, have fun. Yeah, uh, there's no rules. Melon says while during the comments segment, Megan Lovett may panic because they hear their name called. When I hear my name, I panic because I'm scared I'm about to find out I said the stupidest fucking thing in the previous <laughs> week. <laughs> True. Yeah. Yeah, and the problem is we're a little aggressive. <laughs> so we like, are. We so are. you, I do understand that some people might get a little nervous when we... Yeah. I yelled at a guy the other day because I uh, was explaining a sandwich that I made. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I said something about some some dressing sauce yeah. thing that i had and the guy goes sounds like uh sounds like jimmy john's and i was like that sandwich doesn't fucking sound like jimmy john's you nuts you piece of shit it's my fucking beautiful sandwich shut up and they met they went <laughs> i rewatched re it and the guy the guy went i meant the dressing i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> anyway Josh Boyda says, Will should make a video review of the Mario movie. Will Consider this your video review of the Mario movie. <laughs> All right, now we're in the chat. All right. What do you got, people? Make it good. Willow Davis has just dropped so much boba in the sink. Are you making boba, you psycho? Before I he said he pirated the Mario movie, and he, he said, it's okay. I did it on Stop and Shop Wi-Fi. <laughs> There you go. Go to a Panera Bread and use their Wi-Fi to download yeah. your movies and ROMs. Incriminate them. Uh, Beats Forte says, been watching you guys for years now. My subs would be more, but I suck at Twitch. Also, I alternate between, I alternate them between you, Wood, and Scootish. So that's bad. We'll stop <laughs> and only give them to us. Yeah, fuck those. Yeah. No, it's fine. Uh, it's understandable. Jim Slatterup said, uh, have you heard of the Deadline reviewer who loved the Tetris movie but didn't know about the game before? There's a Kotaku article about it, and the author was pissed. I did not hear about that, and I did read the Kotaku article because he was arguing, how does anyone not hear of Tetris? Let alone yeah, no, play? that's crazy. The thing, look, what I wanted to say, like, you, I don't feel like you need familiarity with 
a movie's source material in order to enjoy a movie. In fact, that's the sign of a good movie that you can enjoy it on its own merit without yeah. ever having to know. Yeah, the I think material. that's fun. I I think sometimes being familiar with the source material helps you enjoy the movie more. Yes, but at the same time, that's a double-edged sword. It's one of the reasons why I don't particularly like the Harry Potter movies because at a certain point they were only catering to people who read the book. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the people I, who read the book fucking love those movies. I do think it's bizarre to have never heard of Tetris before. Yeah. But it reminds me of there was like a trend on YouTube and uh, maybe it was TikTok where uh, that it started from uh, these th- this black guy who was watching – he listened to Queen for the first time. Yeah. And was like, how could you never have heard of Queen? Yeah. And it's like, he's probably, he probably just never heard of Queen. Yeah. It's just, you know, he grew, he probably grew up in, in, in a world you don't understand. Yeah. Because you've been around Queen all your yeah. life. This man never been around Queen. So, I mean, we had an episode on here where we said, we, I said, I might not have ever heard a Kanye song before. <laughs> Which is very not true yeah. now that I've listened to a couple of Kanye. Yeah. There's just some songs I didn't realize were Kanye. But uh, that's where that comes from. Yeah. The guy has probably seen Tetris before. He just yeah. didn't make the connection or didn't even care to remember. I remember like there was a while ago, like Billie Eilish was on some talk show. And she said she's never heard Van Halen before. Now, for someone like me, that's crazy. Van Halen is great. Everybody should be listening to Van Halen right now. Stop listening to us. Listen to Van Halen. <laughs> but. At the same time. Listen to just the vocal track of uh, Running With The Devil. Yes. Just just the isolated vocals of Running With The Devil. At the same time, though, she's like, what, 19? It makes all the sense in the world that she would have missed Van Halen. Because that's that's not only well past their glory days, that's well past people were remembering their glory yeah. days. Yeah. So, yeah, obviously, in retrospect, yeah, it makes total sense she would have never listened to Van Halen. Yeah. So it's 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 fine. Yeah, it it, it it makes sense. There's different. Some people grew up with different things. It's, yeah. it's okay. Anyway, uh, K. Jackson saw the Mario movie last night. It was honestly super good. Chris Pratt was fine. Cranky Kong actor wasn't very good. <laughs> DK <laughs> was just Seth Rogen. The story was also too fast, but otherwise loved it. Uh, Fred Armisen was a uh, cranky Kong. Yeah, he and was fine. <laughs> I was the most disappointed in his voice. Really? Yeah, I, I was. I think I was most looking forward to what he was going to do because we didn't, we haven't heard yeah. Cranky Kong yet. We first heard him in the movie. He wasn't in the trailers or anything. And he is, I think the, he does the best voices. He does the best impressions and stuff. Like right. I thought that he would have something good, and I heard it, and it was an annoying sound. <laughs> I did not like it. Have you seen, uh, it's been kind of memeing on, all over the internet, like, people are mad at Seth Rogen for just doing Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong. And, like, he, he even said in an interview, like, I'm not going to put on a voice. You're going to get Seth Rogen or you're not going to get Seth Rogen. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. People are like, he's not even trying. He's not even trying. Even Chris Pratt tried. I saw one that was Charlie Day talking about how he got the Luigi voice. And, yeah. he, and they told him, you're doing a Tony Soprano. You got to stop that. And yeah. Charlie Day was like, okay, you're wrong, but okay. <laughs> um. Holy Lettuce says, I ended up falling asleep watching a speedrun on YouTube the other night and woke up to you guys on my TV. I couldn't understand a word you all said. Okay. Okay. <laughs> because you just woke up or because we talked too fast and yeah. were too loud? Or because we were talking about something that just goes over your head. Or we don't speak English yeah. well. Uh, S. Marcy says, that's why they hire these major actors. Yeah, you're hiring Seth Rogen to get Seth Rogen. I don't know what people expected. The the Pixar method is that they they don't look for specific actors they look for specific voices so like something like Inside Out they didn't hire Amy Poehler to hire Amy Poehler they hired her because the tone of her voice was exactly what they were looking for for that character right in Inside Out Illumination typically hires celebrities to hire celebrities to get yeah. because they think that's the attraction but to the cast's credit they all put in a performance they all yeah. like do a voice which is what voice actors should do except for seth rogan obviously he just got <laughs> baked also jack black was kind of just jack black but that's just what you needed right but he like he still like put on like a he like deepened his voice and like you know i think they put uh you think they put a filter on they it? put a I, I mean i think he maybe deepened it a little bit he but can, but they did 
definitely put a filter on it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bam SCB says, thanks for showing me Mario 64 Plus, Bob. That actually got me to give that a try, and it's awesome. What is Mario 64 Plus? I don't know. It's your I don't, thing. I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh, is that the PC port with all the shit? That, uh, that shit is great. <laughs> that is a great way to play Mario 64. It makes it like widescreen, and it's got, uh... you can add, um, like uh the cappy dive and stuff like that uh, like like it's 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 really cool uh focuses on customizability and aims to add features not uh only to fix some issues found in the base game but also enhance gameplay overall with more uh extra options it uh, there's a way you can make it there's a setting where you can get a star and stay in the world and get the next star just okay. like you can in in odyssey, odyssey with the yeah moons. yeah <sighs> uh you need to watch Adam Sandler's Pixels 2015 before you play Yoshi Tetris Attack. Then watch Tetris. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, you need you need some prerequisites. Yeah. Uh, does Will use handheld retro emulator like the one Bob has reviewed? Uh, fun fact: He is it here? What did, did you give it back to me? I don't. Yeah, I think it did. So he he Bob gave me one of the Amber Nicks that I wanted to like start using. But the aspect ratio is all fakak. It's all messed reason. up. I don't know what happened. Uh, so we want to try to fix that. I did. Uh, I did uh, do the analog pocket trick. Okay. Like, yeah, but some like I don't know for some reason Genesis isn't working and Super Nintendo games aren't working. So I gotta like I gotta figure that out. But I, like Game Boy and Game Boy Color games are working. That's what I would really use it for anyway. You just gotta take my ROMs because yeah. uh, I'm pretty sure you just have the wrong format for Genesis and uh, Super Nintendo. The, I know you have to remove the headers. Yeah, so mine yeah. all have the headers removed. Okay. Right. So yeah. just just take my ROMs. All right, we're talking about conspiracy to commit a crime, right? Yeah. Now. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Thanks for hanging out. Thank everybody. you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on twitch.tv slash wolf and if you can't make the show for any reason at all we always put it up as an archive version over on our youtube channel youtube.com slash wolf den podcast so go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us you can do that as well we're also an audio podcast on apple Podcasts, google play spotify your preferred podcast service of choice no matter where you get the show from though be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms uh i probably won't stream until thursday i think we're supposed uh, to have a dinner on thursday oh. no yeah but then i'll i stream at night oh okay. doesn't matter right i forgot uh but i have a packed out thursday <laughs> uh the electrician's coming over at eight in the morning oh that sucks for you don't sleep then i have the video to go out at 11 in the morning oh okay. i have uh podcast upload at one in the morning which i guess i don't have to be there for mm-hmm. i got my my japanese class is usually five o'clock he moved it to three and then i found out we had a dinner at five yeah. so <laughs> and then i guess i'll stream it's gonna it's thursday might be a wacky and wild anyway you probably won't see me till thursday i don't know i might be dead i might fucking want to go to yeah. sleep Anyway, here you go. Go watch what he's doing. Uh, is he playing Pokemon Stadium? Okay, well you can go ask him if uh, if you if if, you, <laughs> if, if you the game's tra- any good. If you can even play the game at all. Yeah. If you could transfer your original Pokemon Red saves over. <laughs> yeah, I think he's playing with people. All right. Uh, all right. Thank you all for being here. I'm gonna continue to futz around with these cameras. It didn't like me. It didn't want to switch to me. I, I don't think know what it, that's about. Definitely sounds like a you problem. Yeah, maybe I gotta be louder. All right. See you later. Goodbye. Bye.